All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 12th day of June, Sunday, in the year of our Lord, 2022. And we're drawing near the end of this age. Brothers and sisters, if you don't, uh, and those who don't know God, you better put your house in order. You better be reconciled with God because judgment's coming. (laughs) Judgment's been here already. You think COVID was an accident? You think that uh, sin does not have consequences? Well, more is coming. We see it all around us. Romans chapter 1 being fulfilled. At the end of the chapter, especially. Just nonsense. And it is... Sin is expanding and spreading everywhere. Now Fox News is coming out endorsing transgenderism in children. Running stories out, approving of that. Uh, so, do not put your health, trust in the conservatives. They follow the corruption like everyone else. They're just lagged behind a little bit. Here in Illinois, you know, the... the, the I don't watch television. I cannot stand it. In Illinois here, the Republican candidates for governor and everything else are engaged in a a mud-slinging fest, slinging mud at one another, which means they're all disqualified. They are all corrupt. They are unsuitable for public office. In fact... You know, the, the problem here, in you know, one of the problems in the United States is who, who is able, it's just like uh, Roman Catholicism, they've got an utterly corrupt pope. Who is able to, to investigate and discipline the pope? No one, because he is God on earth, according to their theology. The vicar of Christ. He's not subject to councils, to anyone except himself. Uh, in the United States, what do we got here? Democracy. Who's gonna Who's gonna investigate the Congress? Investigate the corruption in Washington. Not. I'm not talking about the corruption in the FBI, which is evident, or the CIA, which is deeply hidden, and the NSA, which is in the realm of darkness. You know that those outfits have to be utterly corrupt because sin loves darkness doesn't like light. They got to keep all their dirty deeds in secret. And they use national security as the excuse. Really? Like uh, the Russians and the Chinese don't know about spy satellites and that. They got them too. Even Israel's got spy satellites. I think Iran's got them. Who else has got them? Just about everybody. Elon Musk. Probably got his own spy satellites and own own anti-satellite weapons. Who knows what he's got up there? Has anybody even checked? See, you've got this system. We've got this system in America now, where we've got corporatocracy. The government is owned by the corporations, or does the government own the corporations? They're in bed together with each other. I mean, now uh, Musk, uh, SpaceX, the government is contracting its flights. It's deeply connected to these mega corporations and these oligarchs of America. You know, people like Zuckerberg and Bezos, and they, they all got deep, secret ties with the government. We don't know who owns who. There's probably a lot of mutual uh, ownership, you know, like interconnected uh, 
uh, corporate directorships where they have the same people in multiple places. Just like the CIA. How would you know how much of the internet is actually owned by the CIA? And, you know, uh, it's just like the, the, the concern about TikTok and uh, Huawei phones. Is it really Chinese spying or is it a fact that if the manufacturers are out from underneath American control, we don't have the NSA spyware and backdoors installed in the phones? Does your computer at home have an NSA backdoor put there by Bill Gates or the people at Apple? Who knows what's required? When it comes to national security, it's all in darkness. Even the courts are darkness. This is all corrupt and wickedness in the name of national security. It's all wickedness. Look what they're doing to Assange. If it's people expose it, they are, you know, disappeared or hunted down. Black prisons, all this, all this wickedness that is brought in not only by Democrats but by Republicans in the under the guise of national security. Yeah, that's the Trump card. Everything's national security. Who knows what the government's really doing? They, who's going to investigate them? The Congress? Well, who's going to investigate Congress? Who's going to investigate Biden, who was in the Senate for over 30 years, something like that? He is one of them. See, t today, nothing happens without money, and the Supreme Court, in their utter wisdom, decided to open the floodgates to corporate contributions. Now, who believes that politicians aren't indebted to those who put them in office, who provided the funding and support for their campaigns. See, the the uh, billions of dollars, Jan told billions, uh, both in cap money and in free support, given to Biden and the Democratic Party, especially, by social media like Facebook and YouTube, Google, Twitter, they are unaccountable. And you don't think those that were put in office by them and supported by them and pimped by them owe their position to those people, to those corporations? Of course they do. And of course, the very fact that corporations would engage in this behavior, not in the interest of their investors, but in their own personal, the, the people in charge, their own personal ambitions and desires to transform America. Well, as some people say, I've got a bridge to sell you or some land to sell you in Florida. Well, that was back when Florida was a swamp. Oh, my. The, it's corrupt through and through. De America is a failure. America has proved the word of God, that, that everything a man does is a failure. The vanity of man, of sinful man. Man can't do anything good apart from God. Man is corrupt. It, it goes back 6,000 years to the garden. It's all science doesn't believe that. I believe in evolution. Well, then you're a fool. Because the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Every, so, so science claims everything just started from nothing in the Big Bang. There was nothing. And then it all happened. Spontaneous generation of everything. So so what started that? How did it... Well, I, I've heard some rumors about there was a flux, a quantum fluctuation. Well, to, you can't have a quantum fluctuation with nothing. These people are so ca caught up in their own idolatry of science. There's a name for that. It's called scientism. Science is a religion. The faith in science. Yeah. Follow the science. Trust the science. Well, God gave us an education in that the last couple of years, didn't he? See, scientists, and, and I noticed this years ago when I was 
I worked in a lab. I ran a lab. I was a small corporation. I, I had multiple hats I had to wear as an engineer there. And I realized over the years, too, as, uh, as a Christian, because a Christian has, re has received the love of the truth. And, and we, we know how things really came about anyway. God just told us. God has told us things you cannot derive empirically like the origin of things. You can't. You can't examine it scientifically. And when science pretends they can, that's scientism. That's religion. That is man's covering his religion in a, a false religion in the cloak of science. Science becomes a idol, a false god. You know, just like medical science. Yeah. You know, I see. See, that's another. Thing. All these things that people refuse to examine because they worship them. Like uh, Congress, you know, like who's going to investigate? You know, Congress is so corrupted by the love of money, the need of money. And it's it's evident that the you know the ads here in Illinois. I would not vote for a single one of those people. In fact, I am not going to vote. I'm going to keep my hands clean because these people are all unfit. All of them. Because the only ones that can get a, a, a people becoming aware of them to be on media and everything else requires the money that corrupts them. Regardless of the original intents or what their imagined intents are, you have to wonder about people that want to be in public office anyway. Why? Truly, what, what are the true motives? It's like police, uh, to protect and to serve. Really? But what are your deeper psychological motivations? Why do you want to carry a stick and a gun? Is it really to do good? Are you really capable of doing good without God? Or are you just one of the other criminals that populate this world? You just wear a uniform. But you do evil, too, whether in one form or another. There is none good but God alone. That's what Jesus said. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the testimony of Scripture. That's the problem. Government can't fix that. Government's supposed to try to restrain it. That's all they can do. But they don't do that anymore. The restraint's off. Government itself, has, in the United States, has become the advocate of wickedness. America, democracy has proven itself to be another idol, a failure. American democracy is an abject failure. You know, when the, when the, it's like the January 6th nonsense, which has become a, going to become a national holiday pretty soon, apparently, <laughs> where the, where the, where they surrounded themselves, and now they do it periodically, surround the, the, the Capitol with razor wire and fences, and call it the National Guard, uh, apparently out of fear. Well, they ought to have fear, but they ought to have fear of God. Because they're not restrained by the fear of God, then they don't care about the evil. They engage freely in evil. The question is, what does the Bible say about this? It's sort of hard to, to narrow it down to particulars, but it's, it's, things are becoming quite clear. Some of the older interpretations, you know, like, like uh, Rome, Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, the Pope. I mean, yeah, it's a big thing, and it's utterly corrupt, and it's a form of Babylon the Great. But is it the only form? <laughs> Uh, by the way, Catholicism is the largest uh, Christian religion in the United States. The second largest denomination is going to be meeting starting today, Sunday, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention. Well, that'll be a cesspool. Uh, uh, their their agenda, I think, is threefold. Is what is it? Plant, um, number two on the list is is uh, is racial reconciliation and one of the other things on the list is is to plant churches to plant church buildings southern baptist churches corrupt churches <laughs> say if if you're if you have a uh, say in, in a city and you don't want to uh, 
get a Baptist church there, and you decide, well, the Southern Baptists will help me. Guess what? You've been corrupted. As soon as you, you, you accept their help, their money, you have corrupted yourself. And, and you'll be filled. They will be telling you what to do. They'll send you out uh, weekly news telling you what your agenda is to be. And if you go along with them, you've been suckered. I had a short stint as a Southern Baptist pastor, and I was ignorant of the Southern Baptists. And uh, I didn't stay very long, because not only the local congregation was uh, worldly, corrupt. They just were uh, seeking their own pleasure. And they made that clear. Uh, they, they apparently had a problem because I had... Uh, my sermons can go... For a half hour, 40 minutes, maybe, depending on how much I have to say. And there was complaints about that. They preferred a nice short service because they all wanted to go out and get go to the local restaurant named Luby's uh, before the crowds got in. And I was told that. That 15 minutes would be a good length. The shorter, the better. It was, well, this was a rather unique uh, place, but uh, small, too. It was not a big mega church by any means, a tiny church. But they also were corrupted, uh, Southern Baptists, because they were a church plant from a large local Southern Baptist church, and they had written into the, uh, uh, the property ownership requirements that the if they were to leave the Southern Baptist denomination, they would leave their property. Corrupt. Utterly corrupt. See, it's all about the Southern Baptists. It's not about Jesus Christ. See, the church planting is all about planting Southern Baptist churches. I hear Rick Warren's retiring. No, no sooner the better, but he's already done all his damage, Southern Baptist. See, there, what I noticed quickly there is that the convention, the Southern Baptist Convention, which is beginning their meeting today, is, uh, uh, so I, I hear the plagiarist in chief is not running again for president of the Southern Baptist, but uh, uh, the, the system was, was all man. It was a system of programs. Everything in the Southern Baptist is a program, just like the racial reconciliation program and the church planting program and the, the missionary program, which generally has nothing to do with press spreading the gospel. They don't even know what the gospel is there. They don't. They don't believe in the power of God unto salvation. That God has to save you. They believe that you get a person in to go to church and get them baptized and say a prayer, and then they're saved. That's what Rick Warren's theology, and he was the, the biggest poobah in the Southern Baptist for quite a while. You know, the purpose-driven life. You just say this prayer, this little prayer, and if you're serious, welcome to the kingdom of God. Really? So did God change your heart? Did he change your spirit? Were you born again, truly born again? Going to a, joining a church isn't being born again. Not a man-made church. There's only one church, the only truly. And when you are born again, you become a member of that church. Because God puts you in it. But it's his church. And it can't be seen with physical eyes. But uh, humanity has just about run its sinful course. And... Woe to us who see how bad it is. In a way, I mean, we are already suffering tribulation. Christians, real Christians, are suffering tribulation. Anybody that holds to the truth is suffering tribulation now. Because truth is not permitted anymore. They don't believe in it. It's, it's all existentialism. It's all in your head. You know, the 150 genders. And if you say there are no 150 genders, there's only two. Well, you can't do that. That's your truth. It's not my truth. And who are you to say that there is an absolute truth? God says. See, it's it's all modern postmodern society is all the denial of the existence of God. 
and even people that, that so-called uh, say they're Christians, say they believe in God, they don't put themselves, they're not under the authority of God. They do not regard as God as having authority over them because they do not listen to him. They do not subject themselves to the word of God. Like the Southern Baptists. Does the Bible authorize building big denominations and conventions? Does it authorize denominations at all? No, it condemns them. It condemns them. So how can you call yourself a Christian while you're engaged in constructing things that are in utter violation of God's own word? Explicitly in violation. Uh, First Corinthians, that they were the, the early church were dividing up into to cliques. Well, I like this teacher. I like Paul. I like Peter. I like John. I like, oh, I, I prefer to follow Christ alone. And and Paul condemned that. And what is his denomination? The word denominate means of a name. Give it a name. So the Southern Baptists are utterly condemned in 1 Corinthians. It, it's a mega condemnation against them. Because, and so is Rome, Roman Catholicism. All these things are condemned by the Word of God. They're not his church. They're a man-made thing. Especially you go back to uh, Roman Catholicism and, and prior to that. Roman Catholicism is not the original church. No way. In fact, uh, uh, they didn't even they they weren't even of significance until, uh, especially after Constantine, until the the uh, Rome was left to decay like Detroit. It was sort of the 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 denomination of of, of old Rome as it was de disintegrating. But in the West, it's it, it's the biggest one globally now. But that is. Uh, uh, not that was only because the Muslims pretty much whittled down the eastern branch, the uh, Constantinian branch, which he had. The, but in both, you have the wedding of the church and the state. Which is forbidden in the Bible. There's people still trying to do it in all kinds of places. See, in the Bible, Christians aren't part of the world. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. That's why this stuff bothers us. I guess that's a good thing, though, that it does bother us. I remember my grandmother said something to me one time, and I, I don't forgot the discussion, but it was something, and, and I was a little kid, and it made me blush. My grandmother said, well, at least he can blush. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. Yes. Yes, it is. But the world can't do it anymore. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 17. Since uh, the only place we can get, make any sense out of what's going on is, is God's Word. And uh, <clears throat> so, and now I'm, 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 this Revelation is a difficult book. And I don't want to limit the interpretation of it. But I just want to, to pose the question. D does this sort of describe America today? Revelation chapter 17, starting at verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked to me, saying to me, Come, and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot that sits on many waters. Well, she, he had just seen a vision of a beast with a harlot, a, a prostitute, riding on it, a beast with seven heads and ten horns, a dragon, or serpent, the same word in the original, which represents the kingdom of Satan. <clears throat> and the heads are... The, basically the historical global empires going back to uh, oh, like uh, uh, Persia and Greece and you go back in the book of Daniel and see it so she sits on many waters and it's already explained that the waters are people and nations
with whom the kings of the earth commit fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth uh, were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, fornication, of course, is illicit sexual activity. But in the Bible, I shouldn't say of course, but it is, of course, to me, but that it, it, fornication is uh, a catch-all uh, sexual sin. So any sexual sin that is not in the context of marriage prop, uh, between a man or a, a woman uh, is fornication. But it's also a picture of uh, idolatry and uh, other things that are uh, God uses the word fornication in the Old Testament as uh, in reference to his people Israel because they went after other gods rather than staying faithful to him. So it's spiritual, a spiritual uh, adultery. And that word is used both ways. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Wilderness is... Uh, uninhabited place, desolate. It doesn't necessarily mean desert or forest or something like that. It's just, it's like, where was America planted? In the wilderness. It was largely uninhabited. And I saw a uh, woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten hearts. So it's, it's, right, it's sitting on this beast, but it, this, this woman is uh, separate. Now, there's another woman in the book of Revelation, and that woman represents God's people. The woman that's uh, uh, clothed in the sun and ha standing on the moon and has uh, a crown of seven stars. So this is like the opposite. Uh, the, the beast is in a bit like a counterpart because it's got seven heads. And so you have God's people and the devil's people. That in the broadest terms here, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Now, let me just make a point here. Protestants are the children of Rome too. If you've seen any pictures, if you just look up on the internet and pictures uh, on the internet of Vatican II, when they were arrayed there in the uh, in the Vatican for that council. Of course, in formal attire, the uh, the bishops are always dressed in purple, purple stoles or other things. That identifies them as a bishop. And scarlet are the cardinals, which are the political princes of the church, sort of. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, this is, I don't know, if, I don't think they do the same thing in Eastern Orthodoxy, but they do have very elaborate garments over there, too. But, but uh, of course, there was, uh, Eastern Orthodoxy is small in numbers compared to Roman Catholicism. Uh, and all that sprang forth from that. But uh, here, so the woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, and having in her cup, in her hand, a golden cup full of abominations, of her filthy of the and of the filthiness of her fornication. Uh, well, our, our, what is it? Archbishop Vigano of the uh, Roman Catholic Church, now retired, has called the Vatican a uh, the the people in the Vatican a uh, homosexual mafia. So. Uh, yeah, it's dominated. The, the priesthood is is dominated by homosexuality. Catholic sources will tell you that. See that this uh, the the child abuse. This is usually the abuse of young boys, yeah, or young men. They don't even count the men that they abuse. I don't know if they even consider that wrong. Who knows? Well, they can always just go to confession. <laughs> Every priest has his own confessor. <sighs> and the woman, okay. Uh, and on her forehead, 
a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. Mystery. So this is a, something that is hidden that's being revealed here. So this is something that's not obvious. The mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Now this is like Babylon in uh, the Old Testament in ways. See, Babylon was a center, city that was built on commercial power, on trade, on the Euphrates. And this idolatry became a world power. Uh, with the fall of Nineveh, the Babylonians uh, became the power, and then uh, God sent his people uh, into captivity, into Babylon for a period of 70 years to punish them and to break them of their idolatry. So, uh, you know, their worship of things like Molech and Baal. See, God is uh, jealous in the sense that he will not tolerate other lovers or other loves. No, there's only one God. And if you, you, you're not allowed to have other gods, too. And I saw the woman drunk with blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Now, yeah, how many saints and martyrs did Rome kill? We don't know for sure. Thousands upon thousands. But she had the power. When Rome had the power, Roman Catholicism had the power. You know, the Spanish Inquisition. You had the then you had the the Inquisition in Rome itself. When the when the French uh, conquered Rome uh, in the eighteen hundreds for a while, they uh, they found the Va the dungeons under the Vatican filled with prisoners, torture chambers, everything else. Uh, you know, who was the ones? Was it Dominicans or what that were the main? The, the See, the, the people were convinced, even the uh, monks and everything else that participated in the Inquisition were convinced they were doing a service to God and to, the, uh, and to their victims by trying to torture them back to faith. Uh, to this very day, if, if you've paid attention to the statements of the no last number of popes, say at least the last three, they... they uh, publicly, so you, the Rome hasn't changed its attitude at all, that, that the one group, see, they'll tolerate uh, Muslims. Muslims can be saved. Jews can be saved. Atheists can be saved, according to the current pope. Uh, you know, if they do a good deed. But the real problem is Bible-believing, born-again Christians because we reject the authority of pope, the pope. We don't need them. We don't need them because... We are the we are the true priesthood. We are the true church. This is the this is the apostate the the false church. The political church. And I saw the woman drug with, drunk with the blood of saints and the blood uh, and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I marvelled with a great amazement. But the angel said to me, "Why do you marvel? Why are you amazed?" And I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition, destruction. Now, these are not individual things, and this is not a literal beast, okay? Like, this is not a literal prostitute, <laughs> These are spiritual realities. These are symbols of spiritual realities. And if you want to literalize it, well, you can't read the Bible then. The trick, you have to know the author, and he'll help you. Uh And those who dwell on earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life of the uh, from the foundation of the world. This is talk, these things are all talked about in the book of Revelation. The book of life is the names of those who belong to God. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is, 
don't ask me to explain that. <laughs> I don't know for sure. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, Rome has seven hills. Constantinople had seven hills. I've heard Washington, D.C. has seven hills. If you can say it has any hills. But uh, let me point something out. So, uh, hills are raised bodies of land. What? How many continents are there? Seven. Just to, to add something to the mix there. So could there be this is like a global... The woman sits uh, on seven hills. Uh, <clears throat> not referring to a, necessarily a local thing, because there's lots of cities that are seven hills. You can find seven hills is Jerusalem. How about seven continents? Isn't a continent a hill? If you took away the oceans, what do you have? You have seven continents, seven, uh, the way man divides it up, that are so like seven, you know, they're like hills that rise above the sea. As opposed to most of the land, which is submerged under the sea. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the uh, woman sits. There are also seven kings. So th these have multiple applications. Five have fallen, one is, and one is not yet come. Now these are usually like kingdoms. Let's see, you have... Uh, the one that is is usually considered... Here, the kingdom of when is when, when John wrote the book. So that was Rome, and then prior to Rome, you had the the kingdom of uh, 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 Alexander the Great and his descendants, uh, uh, Greece. And prior to Greece, you had Persia, and prior to Persia, you had Babylon, and prior to Babylon, you had. Egypt. Now, these are kingdoms, especially in relation to God's people, to God's, to Israel. So you had Israel in captivity in Egypt. You had uh, uh, captivity in Babylon and then in Persia. Uh, and they returned from Persia. And then you had uh, the kingdom of Greece uh, gain control over the land of Israel. And then finally you had, in John's day, Rome. So these are all places that controlled Israel. So Egypt was also meddling in this. You know, the Egypt was part of one of the fragments of the Greek Empire, too. So you had the, uh, the king of the north and the king of the south and... And so the sixth, uh, uh, one is, and uh, one is not yet come, and when he comes, he must continue a short time. Now, short time is not necessarily short by human standards. Life is short. When you get older, it seems like, oh, wasn't that just yesterday? You can... And the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and one of the seven and is of the seven and he's going to perdition, to destruction. And the ten t horns which you've seen are ten kings who have not have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority as uh, for one hour as kings with the beast. Now again, one hour doesn't mean 60 minutes. It's a period of time. Not a long, not, not a thousand years, but these are of one mind, and they give their power and authority to the beast. 
These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are the called, chosen, and faithful. And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So this is the world, the population of the world. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose. See, this is at near the end of the book of Revelation, of the, uh, uh, the, near the time of the very end. And God bring, is bringing judgment on this thing. And give them the, uh, uh, to be of one mind and give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that reigns over the kings of the earth. Now, does the city of Rome reign over the kings of the earth? No. Today? No. No, no. Um, great city. Megapolis in the Greek. Megapolis. Uh, uh, now, it's not a great nation because a nation is an ethnos. People related by, genetically related, related by race, in quotes. Uh, like the, uh, the, the, the Russian people or the, Scandi the, the Norwegian people or the, the Native American, the, Ch the Cherokee people. Or, you know, those are ethnos, those are nations. Uh, in general, the, the Isra Israeli, the, the, the Jewish people are an eth mostly an ethnic people. Not, not entirely. Because you can be Jewish without being ethnically related. But typically, they're, the vast majority are ethnically related. Now, that's a nation, ethnos in the Bible. Ethnos in Greek. But a city... See, a city, a, a, a palace is like Athens or Rome or, or Sparta or something. So that, that, a palace or Jerusalem, it's a fortified city, a political thing. It's not an ethnic thing. It's a political thing. So this is not uh, an entity that is a, a particular people. But what city, what, what, see, uh, Rome as a civilization, as, a, as an empire, uh, was, it, it, although it began somewhat as ethnically, a bunch of pirates settled the city of Rome, uh, but you have, it became much bigger and much more than that. The, 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 it wasn't the Roman ethnic people. It became this, this thing, this, this uh, the, the city of Rome it was the empire. It's also the empire of Rome. And it spread over the Mediterranean world. What would you describe the United States as biblically? A nation? An ethnos? No. <laughs> we have a lot of ethnos strife in America at times. And a lot of people stirring it up constantly. It's an industry. It's like a lot of things in America, they become a business. Racial, racism becomes a business in America. It has. People have made a lot of livings. The civil rights workers make livings off racial strife. It's not in their interest to get rid of it. It's just like it's not in the interest of the pharmaceuticals uh, industry to cure, uh, to cure things. It's in their interest to keep them going. Uh, that's not their scam. If you remove modern medicine, how much effect would it actually have on human longevity? Not nearly as much as you imagine. Not nearly as much. What do you need? Clean water, clean food. You know, proper sanitation. So, yep, basically, well, clean water is related to proper sanitation. Those are the important things for health. And... Uh, Live a healthy lifestyle. That's it. Get get enough exercise. 
Don't overeat. Uh, that that's it. The other stuff, you know, uh, even vaccinations have have made only a very marginal change in human longevity. Uh, and if you don't believe me, just go out into an old cemetery sometime and look at the ages at which people died. You'll find children dying. So it, uh, vaccinations among young children have had an effect. Um, I'm not going to discount vaccinations altogether. But vac vaccinations are a very small part of medicine. and they, they, they go back to the 1700s. Um, But uh, the actual, you think of the, the biggest industry in America is health care, by far. But it's, it's actually only marginal when you actually look at it objectively on quality of life and length of life. No. <laughs> it, uh, it does not have a uh, necessarily even a positive effect. It likes to prolong dying because there's lots of money to be made in keeping dying people alive for a long time. Obamacare was a, a, a huge gift, well, a payback to the pharmaceutical and industrial uh, health care industry. Wow. <sighs> yeah, committing fornication with the kings of the earth. Uh, this is multiple applications, but America could only be described using biblical language as a city, like Rome, the city, or, or Babylon. See, Babylon was not just the, the the Babylon was just the capital of it. So, when you talk about the capital, what city rules over the kings of the earth? United States. United States. And then for a short while in the 90s, it was uncontested. And now it's having problems because it's beginning to be contested. It's global domination. And it's hollowed itself out. And become utterly corrupt. Po you know, there is a, the, the idea of power corrupt corrupts. It, no, the, it, power is like fertilizer to corrupt people. It just causes the corruption to multiply. It gives you the freedom to become, to express your corruption on, in an unrestrained way. And that's what the United States is. It's, uh, who restrains the United States? Is the United States bound by international law? No, it does whatever it pleases. It invades whoever it pleases. Now that Russia has restored their power to a degree, that's, it, that's a good thing in China because uh, America unrestrained is a great danger to the world. It's corrupted the world. But Americans don't want to see that. The love of money. American democracy is not a good thing. It's a corruption. A democracy is a... When you have a sinful human race, democracy is probably the worst form of government there is. The idea that the majority of the people who are sinful get to decide what's right and wrong is a really bad idea. Godless people. And that's what we have in America. Most Americans are godless. They live as if, even if they claim to be uh, believe in God, they do not subject themselves to the authority of God. God is not their God. Other things are their God. You find this in churches. Most of the people in churches, I'm general, you know, I said most, I didn't say all, are effectively godless because church is something they go to to make themselves feel better and to to try to get rid of their guilt i mean there's there's many religious people but that doesn't mean they're godly it doesn't mean they're saved uh roman catholicism 
I don't know if they're they're going back to this yet or not, or they just decided to drop it because the priests don't like to do all the work. Uh, daily daily uh, mass. You, you could find uh, people going any day of the week. You could go to a Catholic church that has a priest that's actually there. In other words, not, not the rural parishes where they have a priest that goes around when he can get there. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the the larger ones uh, in the cities you have would have daily mass, and you would find every day there are people that would, and people were encouraged to daily until COVID, <laughs> daily go to to mass to to eat Christ, yeah, literally, <laughs> because the bread becomes literally the body, blood, soul, and divinity. It becomes the living Christ. And it's uh, a continuation of the cross, his sacrifice. It's, uh, you're, you're partaking of Christ's sacrifice literally by eating his body, blood, soul, and divinity. You're ingesting God. You think that most actually most American Catholics don't believe that, but that puts you that makes you a heretic and outside the Catholic Church, by the way. Uh, I don't believe it's a uh, you don't have to believe in transubstantiation, the Bible doesn't say that, uh, but it's also not just a piece of bread and meaning without meaning, it's more than a mere symbol, it's it is a a, a something that God ordained, but it's it, it's to be done in a vivid recollection of what Christ did for us. It's done in memory of his death on the cross. It's a continuation of the Passover meal, but the true meaning of the Passover meal. It wasn't about a lamb in Egypt. It was about Christ on the cross. So, uh, the, but the, back to the point here, when you look at America, America is a city, not a people. There's no American people, other than the Native Americans. And they've been disenfranchised. <sighs> Put in camps. Or... Uh, Oh boy, they, 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 and you know, the, the Native Americans, uh, it never was done on them and continues to be done. I mean, one of the greatest problems on reservations is drugs and alcohol. See, poverty is not a problem. As long as you've got food and clothing, I mean, uh, uh, Native Americans, the idea, you know, casinos, oh, that's a real corruptioner. But the idea of a Native American cult, I'm not an expert on American, Native American culture, but I can, as a Christian, I can sort of enter into these things uh, and see their weaknesses, their faults, and other things that are not necessarily wrong. But the idea of uh, uh, boundless wealth, it was not a virtue. Historically in the world, pretty much not. America is the love of money being the, the the purpose of all things is you know not this is America is really corrupt. The idea of uh, the worship of Adam, of Adam Smith and the the and capitalism is a terrible corruption. Uh, you cannot have certainly democracy. You cannot have democracy and. Uh, corporate contributions. No. Because we have the whole idea that corporations are actually legal people. That is a, a, an absurd corruption. They're not people. They're organizations. They're things that people create. <sighs> See, you, you, you can't... Huh? And then they say that they have rights. That's absurd. Well, like the whole idea of rights, human rights apart from God is absurd. Human dignity apart from God is absurd. Anything apart from God is absurd. Existence is absurd without God. Yikes. <clears throat> so I, I just want to point out here, let's go on a little bit to chapter 18. How am I doing? I've almost 
almost an hour. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illumined with his glory. Now in chapter 17, we find out the, the beast that the woman uh, sits on will, uh, will, God will use it to punish Babylon the Great. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, has become the dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh, wrath or passion. Um, to burn with passion would be the same word. So uh, th this, this thing, this city, has corrupted the whole world. Do you know one of the reasons Osama bin Laden launched the attack in 9-11? Was because America, the American culture, the America is not satisfied with, with uh, power itself, but has to corrupt everything. Uh, the, the American media, the American cultural values, <coughs> you want to call them that, everything, it tries to impose on others. Democracy, it tries to... Democracy is not a moral good. There is nothing good about democracy. It's just, it's just it's simply a political system. It is not a moral virtue. But America worships it. Trying to impose the American way of life on all the world. You know, like George W. Bush trying to, uh, to make Afghanistan into a Western democracy. An Islamic tribal people into a Western democracy. But that's contrary to their culture, to their history, to their religion. Islam and democracy don't go together. Islam and Christianity don't really go together either because Christianity is about what is true and what is just. The will of the majority does not constitute what is true and what is just. It's a denial of God. Democracy, in a way, is a denial of God because it says the majority is what's true. The majority is what's right. That is a denial of the authority of God. Of course, the Founding Fathers were anti-Christian, really, anti-real Christian, and persecuted those who were. Look what happened to those who refused to back the revolution. The American Revolution was in stark violation of the Word of God, the New Testament. And yet... The 4th of July will be celebrated in most American churches. And I won't be in one of them on the 4th of July. Any of them on the 4th of July. Not unless I have assurances in advance from the pastor that 4th of July is not going to be the subject uh, of a positive sermon. No way. Better for me not to go than to have to walk out or to be very angry. Uh, but most American Christians aren't willing to, to look in the mirror at themselves or at the country they live in. For all nations have, have drunk the wine of the uh, wrath of her fornication. The world has been controlled since World War II by, largely by the United States. And the United States has created these institutions of the globe, the United Nations, creation of the United States. You can have the allies, yeah, but the United States. You know, the members of the Security Council were all the allies, the, of the victors of World War II. Yeah, the five permanent members. 
But who actually controls things? The World Bank. The World... Uh, uh, the other World Economic Fund. Uh, the... Uh, uh, look at Davos. I mean, all these people... All, capitalism. The United States... Not without other things, but it's part of the, the system that's broader than just the United States. Westernism, we could say. Godlessness. Used to be Christendom, and now it's not. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, in bed with her. Yeah, like in Ukraine. All these, uh, these, these coups, most of them succeed. There was one, it was a 20, what was the one, a 2016? The one in, they tried to do, and the CIA tried to pull off a coup in Turkey against Erdogan. Didn't work. But uh, they just pulled off a coup in Pakistan. The, the outcome's not certain yet because it was against the will of the majority of the people there. See, the CIA's been doing this for years. The United States, the CIA runs its own pre, uh, operations. It doesn't necessarily tell anybody what's going on. The president of the United States is in the pocket of the CIA and the NSA. Who, where do they get their, where does the president get his information from that he makes decisions on? The people in the CIA and the NSA and the FBI have a lot of control over the president because they're the ones that tell him what's really going on. And they can tell him whatever they want. How does anybody know? They operate in darkness, all of them. Secrecy, national security. Well, sorry, Mr. President, we can't tell you all that information. Yeah, that's why Trump got into a lot of problems, because he didn't believe them. He didn't trust them. He wasn't part of the system. And he promised to drain the swamp. Uh, the swamp fought back. He got et by the swamp. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Well, I'll tell you, this points to the United States. The United States is no longer a producing nation. It is not an exporting nation. The United States used to be the greatest exporter in the world. Not that long ago. It is now, and has been for decades now, the greatest consumer in the world. It imports far more than exports. It's been living on credit. It's been living on the power to print the dollar. It's, it's a lie. America has hollowed itself out. The manufacturing's all moved to places like China. We used to worry about Japan. Uh, China. You know, we used to, used to send up businesses to Mexico. Now it's China. They've taken the businesses out of Mexico and moved them to China. Now the Chinese are the largest producer in the world. They also have the largest economy now in the world. But they no longer have the greatest population. India has more people than China now. Slightly. They're just about tied. But. And a lot of stuff's moving to India. You know, all those serv telephone answering services. You wonder why they can't really speak English, American English. Because they're not located here. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. In the Old Testament, you go back to the time of Abraham in the book of Genesis, and the sins of, of Sodom and Gomorrah had reached to heaven. 
See, they, they had luxury and ease and abundance. But they did not care about God. So then, then they did not care about the poor and the needy. They just all concerned about, they were decadent and corrupted themselves to the point, well, we know what they did. To the point where they tried to sexually assault a couple a couple angels. They just live for that, and God's people, uh, Lot and his family, was in Sodom. And God said, "Come out." You see, this is just, there's uh, allusions to Old Testament all through the Book of Revelation. So to understand these images, you have to have a knowledge of the Bible. Render to her just as she has rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. In the cup that she has mixed, mix double for her. Pay her, pay her back double under the law of Moses. If you stole something, generally, unless it was something very important, uh, the penalty was you had to restore it to fault. You stole somebody's bicycle. You had to repay it with two bikes. Or somebody's somebody's uh, goat for let's say use her goat or sheep. Now if it was his ox, that was a different story. Why? Because his livelihood depended. That was his tractor. His livelihood depended on. It. So if you sold something that was necessary for a person's livelihood for their life, then the penalty was sevenfold. You made it unable for them to provide for themselves and their family. That's a you know, more serious theft. So, in the measure that she has glorified herself, the Babylon in the Old Testament did this too. I sit as a queen and, and uh, reign forever. The United States has glorified itself. United States has spent uh, seriously in lots of ways. I remember the moon landing. The United States, uh, Richard Nixon said that was the greatest event in human history. He didn't last much longer, did he? Yeah, God does not approve of that. Do you, do you know that Nixon was, let's see, he was actually supposed to be a Quaker? <laughs> he obviously wasn't a very good Quaker. Uh, In the measure that she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. This is a quote from the book of Isaiah about the city of Babylon. See, that's the United States has, has said this, especially after the fall of the Iron Curtain. The United States, you know, under uh, George under the Bushes and the Clintons. Render to her as she has rendered to you. So as she glorified herself in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow, for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, and am not a widow, and I will see no sorrow. No fear of God. No, no, uh, no guilt for the, the, the things she has done for others, to others. See, America deludes itself into thinking it's a good nation. It's not. It lies to itself. And the, the Americans love it. If you want to get a church to please a church, just lie to them. Tell them how wonderful they are. You can build a mega church really easy. But if you won't do that, you're not going to have a mega church. <laughs> you know, and just because somebody preaches from the Bible doesn't mean they're actually preaching God's Word. Uh, John MacArthur, y you can treat the Bible as an abstraction. It's just a thing you do. And that's what John MacArthur does. 
he doesn't actually preach God's word to the people. It's all about John MacArthur. It's not about God's word. It's, a, it's He's just using God's word. Listen to his sermons carefully sometime. Go to his website. See, see who's, who it's all about. And it's all about John MacArthur's. What is, his, all the books he supposedly writes that he doesn't write. His name's on them as author, of course, on everything. It's John MacArthur, John MacArthur, John MacArthur. Uh, just because a person uses the Bible don't necessarily doesn't mean that they are preaching God's word. You, are you applying it to people? Are you telling go people what God is saying from his word? Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. Now, again, a day is a period of time. That usually is one day, but not necessarily. Death and mourning and famine. And she will be utterly burned with fire. Um, uh, don't take utterly too far there. Um, for strong is the uh, is the Lord God who judges her. Uh, again, this is a translation, and translations can be corrupted, or well, translations are somewhat corrupted, uh, generally in small ways unless you've got like the message Bible or something, by the beliefs of those who do the translation. So there's always some corruption that enters in. So that's why you have to go back to the Greek sometimes and check is, okay, it says, it says this here, but you have to remember, could the translators have been influenced by their own theology? Yeah, uh, Therefore, her plagues will will come. Uh, okay, uh, the the kings and the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her, will weep and lament for her, when they see the smoke of her burning. Now you, you look at the corruption. Look at Western Europe. Look at NATO. How corrupt these governments are, and how many people in power there are poor. The whole system. The whole capitalist system. Now, all human systems are, are bad, but some are worse than others. And I think uh, liberal democracy is a terrible corruption. <laughs> and I know that's, that's probably heretical to say that, but you have to, biblically, the idea of the majority ruling is a unbiblical idea. In fact, it's, the Bible is explicit. Uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, it says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Just because the majority wants to do something doesn't mean you're permitted to follow with them. No, you're to follow God. And not go rah-rah and cheer the mob on. Even the founding fathers were deathly afraid of mob rule. That's what we got. Look at, you know, before Biden, especially Antifa, Black Lives Matter, it was mob rule. It's like right now is is uh, some some wicked uh, guy sh shoots down a bunch of kids. And rather than dealing with the problem by taking them out, giving them a quick trial, you got two or more eyewitnesses. Oh, yeah. Hang them. In front of the school. Hang them. Publicly. Televise it. Well, that'd be barbaric. Yeah, but it might stop some of this stuff. There's a reason that executions in the Bible are public. And the entire public participated. Stoning, the reason God, I believe that God ordained stoning as a punishment, because the entire community was required to participate in putting that person to death. It wasn't done in a building in secret. The community was required to do it. Not the king, the community. To carry out God's sentence. You see, there's, oh, they saw God, it's, it's, it's just cruel. Well, it's, so they, so somebody murders somebody and and uh, how, how is it less 
more cruel than what they did to someone. Payback. Retribution. God deals in retribution. Not the God of America, not the God of popular Christianity, the God of the Bible. So the kings of the earth that committed fornication uh, and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Oh, they're going to weep. Oh, no, this great system that, that provided us with everything we love. We made a killing at this. Now it's gone. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for at one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her. Amer Remember, America is the greatest consumer in the world. For no one buys their merchandise anymore. You know, they, we, we've been manufacturing all this junk. Uh, these iPhone factories, uh, these, the Tesla mega battery, Tesla gigaworks, all this stuff. Uh, nobody's going to buy it. Merchants of uh, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet. Every kind of citron wood and every object of ivory, every object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense and fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, even good f essential foods, cattle and sheep and horses and chariots and the bodies and souls of men, slaves. Slave, this country was a... Uh, provided a big market for slaves, or this this city. The fruit of your soul longed for, uh, the fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more. Your wealth is gone, and it will not return. The merchants of these things, which became rich by her, will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed with fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Luxuries, all luxuries. For in one hour such great riches have, become, have come to nothing. Every shipmaster... So the stuff is imported by ship, generally. All who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out uh, when saying, the smoke of, uh, about the smoke of her burning, what is like this great city? And they threw dust in their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, alas, alas, the great city, in all, and uh, in which all the ships of the sea became rich, by her wealth, for in one hour she has become desolate, and barren. Rejoice over her, O heaven! This is a good thing. And you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. She persecutes God's people, kills God's people. Then the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it down into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be brought down and shall be found no more. And that goes into the, the musicians are going to be gone. The, no more weddings, that's going to be gone. It's all going to be gone. For your merchants were great, the great men of the earth. The oligarchs. For by your sorcery, pharmakia, all the nations were deceived. See, we, we've got a world that, that is materialistic. And a lot of that comes from America. The American Revolution started uh, something bad. The American Revolution is something to be mourned over, not celebrated. 
And a lot of Christians are going to be offended by my, just, what I just said. Because it's true, biblically. It was a sinful thing. And in her were found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain on the earth. Now, some are going to say, well, this dates back. This is a prophecy of the destruction, the burning of Rome under Nero. Uh, the book of Revelation was written like 30 years after that. And Rome did not become empty and barren. There was suspicion that, that Nero himself set the fire because he had some construction projects he wanted to clear the ground for. Yeah, it was not fulfilled. All these preterists, they just want, they have their ideology and they want to uh, just put all this stuff in the past so they don't have to worry about it. America pretty much fits the description of Babylon the Great. America is the greatest consumer, the greatest importer in the world. We have a huge trade deficit. It just gets bigger. America doesn't make stuff anymore. It doesn't sell stuff anymore. It just buys. The only thing America sells is weapons. Eisenhower warned about that. The whole system is corrupt here. Democracy is corrupt. Uh, the love of money is rid of all kinds of evils. And Americans live for luxury. See, the idea of, of having a lot of money and having a lot of houses and having a lot of stuff, that's the American dream. God doesn't approve of the American dream. The purpose of life is to come to know God. To be delivered from your, your love of sin. From the bondage of sin. To be reconciled with God. And to live with him forever. That is the purpose of life. That is God's purpose. He created man to be his very image in creation. His temples. It has nothing to do with the junk that the harlot here desires. And America tries to make over the world in its own image. Look at what America's been doing around the world. You know, Afghanistan is one of the clearest examples because it was utterly obvious that America's going to turn uh, the graveyard of empires into a modern liberal democratic country with liberal democratic values which are utterly corrupt like the sexual values of America are utterly corrupt I see Russia's just passed another law prohibiting uh, gay propaganda I'm sure there'll be uh, you know Putin bad Putin good not absolutely but at least Russia and Putin are moving in a better direction and it is good that, that they have separated, they've had to separate themselves, that the West has separated Russia from them. It's a good thing, and it's also the punishment of the West. See, that the, the whole Western thing here is it's utterly corrupt. We have to look biblically, think biblically about these things, about ourselves, our lives, and where we live. We have to see America for what it really is. Not just see it in a way that makes us feel good. See, the truth often makes you feel bad. It's not about feeling. That's part of America's corruption. It's about the truth. And abiding in the truth and abiding in Christ, who is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. If you want the American dream, if you pursue the American dream, you are following Babylon the Great, not Jesus Christ. Do you have the courage to take up your cross and follow Christ? Or do you want to wallow in the decaying luxury of America? 
that will soon be swept away. Remember 9-11. That was a foreshock. What will happen? Right now, the West is impaling itself on its own sort of sanctions. Judgments here. Make sure you know God because He is the only rock to stand on. Jesus Christ is the rock. Everything else is quicksand. <laughs>